From a runaway ship in the Philippines that crashed through a power plant loading dock, and a tornado in Hattiesburg, Mississippi that loved blowing up power lines, to a massive ferry in the Aegean Sea that crashed into a Turkish scrapyard, and a stunning glacial calving in southern Chile that you have to see to believe. Here are 20 incredible moments caught on camera. The Ostend Spirit was a 26,000-ton ferry operating in the UK. It was owned by an English ferry company called P&O Ferries and had been sailing the seas since 1987. It was originally called the MS Pride of Calais, but underwent several name changes over the decades. In 2013, the Ostend was sailing for a company called TransEuropa Ferries. Later that year, TransEuropa declared bankruptcy and couldn't pay the ferry workers. They decommissioned the Ostend in April and sailed her to her final resting place in a Turkish scrapyard. On November 13th, the Ostend Spirit made an impressive entrance. Now that may have looked like an accident, but what if we told you they did it on purpose? The captain's job was to thread the needle between those two ship husks. He put the pedal to the metal, leaned on the horn, and executed a perfect beaching. The salvage yard in Aliaga, Turkey is full of dead ships. If you zoom in on Google Maps, you can see dozens of other vessels pulled up on the beachhead. Hohesand is a Netherlands shipbuilding town about two hours east of Amsterdam. They're home to the Royal Bodewes Shipyard, known for building sustainable cargo ships. But you can't simply build these boats on water. Instead, you make them on land and push them into the ocean. On February 18th of 2019, Bodewes prepared to launch their newest ship, the Tasman. The 90-meter, 3,000-ton vessel had to be launched sideways into the canal. Just as it was about to slide in, an employee noticed something stuck underneath. Keep your eye on the man in black standing at the front of the ship. Talk about a close call. Our dock worker barely escaped before the ship slid into the water. You can hear everyone's heart sink when the boat starts moving. Then, they all share a collective sigh of relief when he's okay. Next time, he'll probably think twice about running under a 3,000-ton cargo ship. The start of this one's life almost ended his. On October 18th of 2010, train spotters in Metairie, Louisiana watched a Canadian National Railway car haul through Jefferson Parish. A worker got out to flip the switch as the train approached the frog, or the intersection between two tracks. The train got rolling again, but then something went horribly wrong. The locomotive made it over the frog just fine. The 91 cars in tow were not so lucky. We're sorry in advance for the ear-piercing noises.
and we're all lucky that Ray was there to capture this on camera. The Canadian National Railway Company launched an immediate investigation into why this train derailed. Unfortunately, we're not able to find much on their official report. Thankfully, it wasn't full of toxic chemicals like the Norfolk Southern train in Ohio. All 91 cars were hauling grain to the train yard west of town. In the final days of the Cold War, Soviet engineers had a unique dream. They wanted to build the world's largest airplane, the Antonov An-225. Ukrainian engineers made that dream a reality, and Maria took flight in 1988. Funny enough, Maria is the Ukrainian word for dream. Maria doesn't fly that often. When she does, she always draws a crowd. Watching this Leviathan land and take off is a sight worth seeing. On January 9th of 2022, spectators in Poland watched it land for the final time. Nobody knew this was the last time Maria would take flight. In February of 2022, Russian bombers destroyed the airfield in Kyiv that houses the giant plane. It was completely destroyed, along with an unfinished sister plane. Ukraine estimates it'll take about five years and cost $3 billion to rebuild the plane. As the story goes, Maria was undergoing maintenance and couldn't take off once the attack began. Toledo City is a coastal city in the central Philippines. They're known as the Power City, since they're home to several companies that provide power across the Visayas region. Well, that explains why this cargo ship was carrying 18,000 tons of coal into the country. It doesn't explain why the engine suddenly failed. In June of 2020, dock workers watched in horror as the cargo ship lost control and careened through a neighboring dock. Holy Toledo is right! According to our cameraman George, the ship's engine randomly failed. The captain lost control and could only watch as it smashed through the conveyor bridge of the jetty plant. Based on Google Maps, we think this accident occurred outside the Cebu Energy Development Corporation in the heart of Toledo City. It's the only port with a conveyor belt leading from the dock to the facility. Thrill seekers love parasailing. There's nothing like getting towed behind a speedboat while flying hundreds of feet in the air. But every extreme sport comes with risk. That's why they make you sign a waiver before setting sail. On November 24th of 2015, a couple was on vacation in Turkey when they decided to go on a parasailing adventure. Things were going great at first. They had an amazing view of the Turkish coast. Then, tragedy struck. Thankfully, everyone was okay.
Clearly, somebody wasn't paying attention. We don't know whether it was the motorboat driver or the sailboat captain. Either way, their line got caught on the mast and pulled them toward the boat. Thankfully, the line snapped before they got any closer. Take this video as a learning lesson for your next parasailing getaway. Always wear your life jacket. Military fighter planes are amongst the most impressive pieces of technology we have. They can perform incredibly tight maneuvers, break the sound barrier, and put a missile on a dime at over a thousand miles per hour. But when they're not in the heat of battle, we like to use them as stunt planes. The Royal International Air Tattoo is the largest military air show in the world. Nearly 200,000 people flock to the RAF Fairford in Gloucestershire, England to watch these planes work their magic. At the 2016 show, spectators saw why Lockheed Martin's F-22 Raptor is among the best in class. The g-force of a vertical climb like that must be insane. That is why it takes years of training to get near one of these things. About 1,100 miles away in the Czech Republic, another stunt pilot showed off his skills, this time in a Russian fighter jet. Now we'll let you be the judge of which is more impressive. One thing's for sure, both stunts require years of practice and a little bit of insanity to pull off. Chile is a fascinating country. In the north, you have the Atacama Desert, one of the driest places on Earth. Then, at the southern tip of the Andes Mountains, you have the Patagonian Ice Fields, the second largest extrapolar ice field. It is a massive plot of glacial land that covers over 6,300 square miles between Chile and southern Argentina. That is more square mileage than the entire state of Connecticut. In November of 2022, some glacial enthusiasts witnessed a truly amazing sight when one of the glaciers flipped end over end. You're looking at the Grey Glacier. It's a 3.7 mile wide, 100 foot glacier that flows southward into Grey Lake. It used to be even bigger, but a massive chunk broke off in 2017. 
National Park officials said they hadn't seen a rupture that big since the 1990s. You can reach the Grey Glacier via a multi-day ice hike through the Torres del Paine National Park. You can also ride up by boat or kayak, but for safety's sake, all boats have to stay far away. You never know when a glacial calving like this will occur. Somewhere in South Africa, a yacht owner decided to move their million-dollar boat. We're not sure why they're loading it out of the water. Maybe it broke down. Maybe they just needed to bring it somewhere else. Workers attached pulleys to the yacht and tried to haul it onto the dock. The crane should have supported the vessel's weight. Apparently, someone miscalculated along the way. That is a multi-million dollar luxury yacht sinking to the bottom of a murky river. Things went from bad to worse when the boat made contact with the dock. That caused it to flip and land upside down in the water. Within minutes, she was gone. It probably would have been fine if the yacht landed right side up. We'd love to know how the workers explained this to their boss, let alone the yacht's owner. Now we all know how helicopters work. The top rotors spin and create enough lift to hoist the aircraft off the ground. According to NASA, the average helicopter blades spin at about 400 to 500 rotations per minute, or RPM. Cameras work in a similar way. They capture moving images in frames per second, or FPS. Low FPS looks like a flipbook you made in middle school. High FPS looks like a Hollywood movie. This is what happens when RPM and FPS live in harmony. No, this isn't a glitch in the matrix or a magic helicopter. What you're looking at is pretty easy to pull off, if you know your way around a camera. The spinning helicopter blades match the camera's FPS and shutter speed. This creates the illusion that they're not spinning. In reality, the camera is shooting the rotor blades in the same position every time. Meanwhile, the fast shutter speed ensures it isn't too blurry. If you can't figure out the helicopter's RPM, you can just adjust your camera to achieve this effect. Yay, math! Hattiesburg is a city of about 50,000 people in southern Mississippi. On February 10th of 2013, all 50,000 braced for impact when a violent EF4 tornado tore through town. The storm kicked off around 5 p.m. and tracked a 21-mile path of destruction through Hattiesburg and Forest County. One couple stood on their balcony and watched the tornado pass by their hotel. Debris flew through the air and lightning lit up the sky. They were just lucky the storm passed behind the hotel and not over it. Look at 
रहता है You can tell where the tornado passes over power lines and transformers. Those big explosions are enough to send chills down our cameraman's spine. According to the National Weather Service, winds peaked at 170 miles per hour as the storm passed through Hattiesburg. It also injured 82 people. Thankfully, though, none of those injuries were fatal. The storm destroyed 133 homes across Forest County. It damaged several buildings at the University of Southern Mississippi and destroyed Oak Grove High School's athletic complex. In total, the Hattiesburg tornado caused $39 million worth of damage. Most people think of Hawaii and California when they think of popular surfing spots. In Indonesia, most people default to the Kampar River, the country's most famous river surfing destination. The Kampar begins in the Barisan Mountains of West Sumatra and flows 257 miles to the Malacca Strait. The Kampar widens as it approaches the open ocean. As the tide changes, especially during the rainy season, it pushes water back up the narrower portions of the Kampar. This creates a world-famous tidal bore that attracts river surfers from all over the country. The locals simply call it Bono, or True. Wow! Bahaya ini. Our brave cameraman climbed a tree in the middle of the river to capture the entire event. Hopefully, he's a strong swimmer. You can see the land erosion from where this has occurred for thousands of years. Still, the violent tidal bore always floods the roads and villages along the Kampar. Bono waves can reach speeds of 25 miles per hour and grow between 13 and 20 feet tall. They'll travel about 37 miles inland before finally running out of steam. Think about all the worst places to run out of fuel. Now, imagine you're on a fishing boat in the middle of the Indian Ocean and the tank is on Tripoli. E. Oh, and uh, to make things worse, there's a storm moving in. That's what happened to this fishing trawler in December of 2019. Thankfully, they got a distress call out in time. Another ship pulled up, tossed them some rope, and began towing them to safety. They just had to get through the storm first. Transversolar, oi! Woo! Woo! What 
tol. Asian Panther. Look at how massive those waves are as they crash over the ship. Our crew on board the rescue boat clearly gets a kick out of it. We can't say the same for everyone on board the fuelless trawler. Things got a little concerning when the ship turned sideways. You want to hit these kinds of waves head on. You risk capsizing if you catch one from the side. If you consider yourself a glacier enthusiast, you have to get up to Juneau, Alaska and explore the Tracy Arm Wilderness Area. The reserve covers over 650,000 acres and features two 30-mile waterways, the Tracy Arm and the Endicott Arm. Both are lined with magnificent ice walls. On June 20th of 2021, a tour group was in for a pleasant surprise when they witnessed not one, but two glacial calvings. Calving is simply when ice chunks break away from the main glacier. They can be as small as your fist or the size of a three-story building. One tour group got to see the big ones. These tour boats are built to withstand the tsunami waves created by glacial calving. However, the flying bits of ice could pose a bigger threat. Thankfully, nobody got hit. Getting to watch one glacial calving in person is rare enough. Watching two within one minute? Now that's pretty exciting. As the second glacier falls, it flips over and the bottom half rises to the surface. Just look at how much ice was hidden underwater the entire time. Kastamonu province is a Turkish state in the Black Sea region. In late June of 2022, several days of heavy rainfall inundated the province with catastrophic floods. It was so bad that Turkey's emergency authorities had to rescue over 200 people stranded on rooftops. In the town of Inebolu, a small community on the Black Sea coast, raging floodwaters devoured everything in sight. Debris piled against a bridge in the town center. It was only a matter of time before it snapped. Inebolu recorded almost 8 inches of rain in 48 hours. The influx of water was enough to overburden the drainage systems and rivers, leading to violent rapids like this. If you look on Google Maps, the Serke stream is usually an empty canal that flows into the Black Sea. The water doesn't come anywhere near those bridges. That's how bad 8 inches of rain over 2 days can be. Due to frequent rainfall, India and the rest of East Asia are highly prone to random landslides. 
They get more frequent the further into the mountains you go, especially in Himachal Pradesh. On August 20th of 2017, in the capital city of Shimla, locals noticed some rocks rolling down the side of a mountain. Those tiny rocks are a telltale sign that something much worse is about to happen. They grabbed their phones and started recording moments before the entire thing collapsed onto the power lines. Oh my god. The landslide didn't seem that bad at first. Then that massive rock came crashing down and landed on the transformer. Not only were the roads cut off, but now the village was without power. How do you even move a rock that big without blowing it up? Late August of 2017 was a catastrophic time for landslides across Himachal Pradesh. Multiple events across the state closed roads, destroyed homes, and claimed dozens of lives. If you were in the village of Čapešovo in Slovakia on August 10th of 2015, you might have seen a small plane falling out of the sky. A two-person aircraft needed to make an emergency landing. Thankfully, there was a wide-open wheat field ahead of them. The most impressive part of this video is how calm both pilots seem. There's no room for stress and panic in emergency situations. Something went wrong with their plane while flying over a mountainous area. That obviously limited their landing options. We're not totally sure what happened, though. Whatever it was, it required an emergency landing. In aviation, a touch-and-go is when the pilot puts the plane down, accelerates, and then takes off again. They'll then circle the airport and come in for another landing. In February of 2020, this English plane spotter captured a touch-and-go live at London Heathrow Airport. The weather was pretty rough that day, making the landing harder than it had to be. The touch-and-go maneuver serves two purposes. First, it can be a training exercise. Pilots can practice taking off and landing several times in quick succession. It can also be a safety measure when they don't have enough runway space to stop the plane. In this video, our pilot didn't think they had enough room. Instead of hitting the brake, they punch the accelerator and take off again. It's always safer to come back around than force a risky landing. Maratea is a small Italian town about 128 miles southeast of Naples, Italy. They're known as the town with 44 churches, and that's because, well, they have 44 churches over 26 square miles. It also sports 20 beaches along the Tyrrhenian coast. On March 21st of 2018, those beaches were overrun by powerful waves. A storm in the Tyrrhenian Sea sent tsunami-like waves crashing into the Maratea Harbor. Thankfully, the storm wall was there to absorb most of the impact.
The waves didn't seem that bad at first. Things got worse when water started pouring in from the access road. The waves damaged several buildings and devastated parts of the harbor. Loose items were swept away and many coastal streets were flooded. According to reports from Calabria, an Italian province about two hours south of Maratea, waves grew between 19 and 22 feet high. Wind speeds reached 43 miles per hour, or about as strong as a weak tropical storm. If it weren't for that storm wall, the Maratea harbor would have been underwater in minutes. We imagine all 44 churches were packed the Sunday after the storm. Mount Manasla is the eighth highest mountain in the world at over 26,700 feet. It's part of the Nepalese Himalayas, located in the Gorkha district of northern Nepal. Climbing mountains like Manasla comes with inherent dangers, avalanches being the most common among them. Mother Nature can strike at any moment. On September 23rd of 2022, climbers at base camp learned that lesson firsthand. Just when they thought the first avalanche was over, another massive chunk of snow broke free. Thankfully, our camera crew was far away when the avalanches occurred. They said they were both due to a collapsing glacier. If you enjoyed this video and want to see another one just like it, be sure to click the link on screen now. With that, thanks for watching and be sure to tune in next time.